Hi guys, today we talk about agaves. I will share some tips how to take care of them and also show you my small uh, collection of agaves. So when I started collecting succulents, first succulent that I bought in Serbia was uh, agave americana variegata. And uh, over the period of three years, it grew so much that I had to give it away. Uh, I kept one of the babies of that agave. So I would say these are fast growing plants really easy to take care of. So let's go first over the tips for caring for these plants. So when it comes to soil, uh, you can pretty much use the same soil mess that you use for other succulents. Uh, they like well-draining soil and like to be dry between the waterings. My uh, soil mix is made with uh, one-third cocoa brick, one-third cactus soil and one-third perlite. I think in, um, in the agave soil mix I added some sand which is recommended so you can do that as well. Watering uh, once a week uh, would be sufficient. If you go on a vacation and you are gone for like two three weeks and they're not watered they'll probably be fine. In my experience, the worst thing that can happen is one of the bottom leaves can become uh, dried up, but um, they tend to tolerate really well drought and uh, they like to be dry between the waterings. When it comes to pests, I didn't have really problems with agaves. Uh, they don't get like uh, other succulents, problems like with the pests like mealybugs and aphids. Um, more known pest that attacks agaves is snout weevil. Uh, I think that's how you say it. It's basically like a worm that um, goes into the base of the plant and uh, lays eggs and then all those worms like eat your plant. Um, you can notice it by uh, seeing brown at the base of the um, agave. When it comes to propagation, after a few years you have them, you will have a lot of babies. They can also be propagated by beheading, just like Echeverius, Crisulus, Aloes. So um, I have done that successfully in the conservatory with plants that were getting too big and they were at the wrong spot and it was really hard to uh, dig them out and move them. So we just beheaded them and they rooted pretty quickly. During the rooting process, when they're beheaded, make sure that they're well dry, uh, kind of like aloes, that the wound callus or dries up and then uh, occasionally stimulate with a little bit of water before they develop roots and then you can water normally. They usually have really tall blooms. Uh, in some cases, conservatories have to even make an opening in the top of the conservatory glass top or the dome uh, because the, the bloom stalk will go so high in the air. Uh, when they bloom, the bloom comes from the center and they die after that. Uh, but usually during the, that time when they're blooming, they're shooting a lot of babies. Or in some cases, which was the first time that I have seen this in the conservatory when we recently had one agave blooming, they actually can produce um, hundreds of little agave plants on the bloom stalk. So I'll show you that um, on the video that I made in the conservatory. So they're pretty easy to take care of, but what you should have in mind is that they can be uh, dangerous because uh, they're sort of like people that don't want you to get close to them and if you do get close to them, you're going to get hurt. Agaves are pretty unfriendly and hard to manage when they grow in big clusters. Um, they have these needle-like ends, tips on the leaves. And 
Uh, probably uh, from all the succulents, I find them the hardest to manage, even harder than cactuses because I got the most uh, you know pokes and cuts from them when I had to move them so let's take a look at my small collection and see how they are doing outside I just have five of five agaves I think I don't think I forgot anybody but the first one here is called agave uh, white thread of cascade it has like a little white threads going around the leaves um, it has grown a lot um, It was in a small pot like this and I moved it into bigger pot uh, Because it was just kind of falling over very pokey <laughs> This is agave from Kiana Fatal attraction really pretty variegation but uh, has these um, sharp um, Teeth edges on the leaves that are like reddish color and reddish tips so again, very pokey, beautiful agave macrocenta. I have this one in Serbia as well. This one, uh, maybe one of my favorites, just beautiful. They also have rosettes, kind of like the Chavarius, but rosettes are formed by those spiky leaves. Um, I forgot the ID for this one. I think it's called quadricolor maybe because there's like four different colors really pretty variegation uh, and here is my American agave americano variegata uh, since I moved to this new house this plant it's been doing wonderful I have never never had it grow so many leaves so fast and just uh, pulling them so high uh, so that's the indicator that it has a lot of sunlight here it's facing south so I'm really happy here Initially when I brought it, it was uh, bleached on one of the leaves and that's usually uh, the sign of burn when you have leaves a uh, paler color or if you get a little bit of brown, uh, light brown, uh, that can be from um, being burned. So, but overall they're really happy here and I think that they look really pretty. One thing that I forgot to say is that probably from all the succulents that I have, I think that they're uh, the most tolerant of lower temperatures. A lot of succulents that I have when it goes below 50s Fahrenheit or below 10 Celsius, they um, may have some kind of damage like euphorbias or crassulas. May get, they may get the brown spots, especially if it's also uh, humid and rainy outside. Um, unlike those agaves can survive some really low temperatures. In conservatory when we had uh, freezing um, that was minus 20 Celsius um, during the probably 12 hour period, um, our, all of our stapelias in that room died, uh, havortias, crassulas, but not agaves, they survived, especially if they're dry. Now, if you have a lot of precipitation, a lot of water, rain, snow, uh, even if you even if they can tolerate some of those colder temperatures, they're gonna get damaged and get rot uh, if they're constantly underwater. So, but maybe if you have a, a four season room that has a lot of light uh, and it's not as cold as outside and you can keep them dry, they may be able to survive something like that during the winter time. They are opportunistic, uh, just like euphorbias and some other succulents. So um, their dormancy period can be short if you're keeping them indoors and they have a lot of light and warm temperatures and they can start growing even during the late winter time or the late fall. Thank you guys for watching. I hope these tips are going to be helpful to you in taking care of your agaves and see you soon in the next video. Mm -hmm.